You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live uncommon. There's some really awesome opportunities to serve this summer. Yes. And not just in one place. We're going to talk about three different places you can serve this summer internationally. We have some great guests with us. We have Ann Gonzalez, manager for short-term training and engagement. Did I get it right? You did. Nice. Thanks for having me. From the LCMS Office of International Mission. Always good to have you here. <laughs> and more team members from LCMS Office of International Mission. We have Chelsea Irwin serving the Lord in Eurasia. Chelsea, welcome. Thank you. Aaron McKenzie serving the Lord in Latin America and the Caribbean. Aaron, welcome back. Good morning. It's good to be here. And Shara Osiro serving the Lord in Africa. Shara, welcome back. Thank you. Shara was and joined us for a Christmas episode right before the holidays to talk about Christmas in Kenya. It was fantastic. That's awesome. Also, it was about food. So I, <laughs> I mean, there was a part about food. And Nobody I, is surprised. I, yeah. She, just, <laughs> she knows me. So let's dig into the opportunities to serve this summer in, we have some opportunities in Poland, Malawi, and the Dominican Republic. This is exciting. So let's start with Eurasia. Chelsea, tell us about the the community in which you serve and maybe one interesting person that you've met in your time serving there. Yeah, so I am living in the Czech Republic and locally I'm working with the Silesian Evangelical Church and there is this area of Europe on the Polish and Czech border, which is called Silesia. And they're actually their own people. They used to have a kingdom like hundreds of years ago. And I I love serving in this area because it's three cultures in one. You have Poland and the Czech Republic and then the Silesian people. And I live right on the border with Poland and the Czech Republic like I can see Poland from my window. So every, every day I'm experiencing multiple languages and multiple cultures. And it's really, really interesting to see how how the Reformation hit this area. And the church history is incredible. One one person, well, I guess it's a family that that I really have found interesting and and people that have impacted me is my pastor and his father. So my pastor is Polish, but he's living in the Czech Republic, and he's also a Czech citizen. And his father used to be the bishop of the church body that I'm working with here. And they are incredible historians. They know everything about this area, everything that happened with Lutheranism and during the communism. And they have really awesome stories and a lot of insight about why people are the way they are here and why People are turned away from the church as far as living in a post-communist culture when for so many years people were told that church doesn't exist and it's not good for you. So they just started believing it. And now in, in a new generation, people are really open to learning about the church and and what what and who Jesus is all about. So now it's this new era of how can we do outreach in this community? That sounds like such an amazing place to work and really exciting to be able to connect with those people and to, to hear stories about the history and, and all of those things. I, I I wish we had a half hour just to talk about that, but we don't. So Aaron, share about the, the region that you serve in, the communities that you serve in, and, and an interesting person or, or family that you've gotten to know. So I serve in, I live in the Dominican Republic. I've been here about four and a half years now. But my role is on our regional team for Latin America and the Caribbean. So I sit on the the team, the circle that helps determine the the direction and oversight of missions anywhere in the region. So I I can't even narrow it down to one person. I feel like this is like not even a fair question. (laughs) All the time. We have a seminary here. So we're constantly, we receive students from all over the the Spanish-speaking world and the not Spanish-speaking world. We actually just got two new students from Haiti that speak French and Creole and are going to have to learn Spanish really before they can get into the meat of their classes. So there's that. And then I get to travel to other parts of the region pretty frequently. And my whole job really is about engaging the, the sending church, North American congregations and organizations, schools, universities in what God is doing here. And so 
I would consider myself an introvert, but honestly, one of my favorite things is just meeting all of the volunteers that comes. We just had an amazing team here from Concordia Seminary, and now I'm going to totally watch the call day service and like <laughs> no pastors that are going all over in Vickers. So I can't even I can't even pick just one. <laughs> that's fair well, that's a great story <laughs> Shara tell us about where you serve the the people you get to serve and maybe pick out one or two interesting <laughs> characters to share with us all right I may have the same sentiment as Aaron it's really hard to to pick out one one or two I live here in Kenya and there is just a wealth of people that I meet just across the country and especially within the different different people groups here at different tribes and even our work in the refugee camps. But because of my regional position, I travel quite often. And in the region, we work with about 35 different church bodies in about 25 different countries. So at any given time, I can I can go from country to country. But I will share a little bit about the birth that I'll choose probably from Malawi since we're going to talk a little bit about the opportunity there. But the, the head of the church, the confessional Lutheran Church Malawi Synod is the, the church body that we serve alongside. The Their church leader is just a very dynamic personality. I remember probably five years ago, maybe, when Reverend Trump and I went to meet him, Eric Lunsford was actually there with us. And we went from one end of Malawi to the next. And he just was so excited to, to show us, you know, the church. It was very small at the time, maybe about, mm, I would say maybe five or six congregations, which has now grown to about 24 congregations, maybe a handful of pastors. And we've since had students studying at the seminary here in Kenya and Deaconesses as well. But he just has, he's on fire for the Lord and just has a heart for sharing the gospel everywhere, everywhere. And so he's a very dynamic personality. Days are very long. He, he wants to make the most of when missionaries or, or teams or visitors come. Uh, he often is instrumental in hosting our agricultural volunteers that serve in Malawi. He is hands-on. He is in the fields. He's helping them with planting and, and looking at maize. I think this last year we had a team go and they worked a lot with the sorghum plant, which is helpful in the drier season. So, you know, he's hands-on, but a very dynamic person. He loves the Lord and is very evident when you meet him. So he's one of those people that I won't ever forget from my time around the continent. And so it's just exciting to know him and be in the lottery when we get the chance to go. That's awesome. And we will talk about Malawi in just a minute, but let's talk about the opportunities this summer to serve. The English Bible Camp opportunity in Poland sounds very exciting. And Chelsea, you live right across the border from Poland. Tell about tell us about this opportunity that's happening this summer in Poland. Yeah. So this is this is a really awesome opportunity that can be for a really wide variety of ages. I started serving at an English camp in Poland when I was 13. And the oldest person on the team that I was serving on was 80. So it could really be for anybody. Basically, people people are signing up and they're going as teams. You can sign up as an individual and be put on a team or as a congregation. You can go together with your, with your parish and you would be leading in English Bible camp. It's pretty much like a vacation Bible school, but you're teaching in the students' second or third language. So... It's the same, but it's not. But I think the excitement is the same. The The kids that are coming, whether they're from the community or from the local church already, they are excited to to meet Americans and and to see what, what this camp is all about. And of course, for the parish, the Polish parish, it's a huge outreach opportunity. And I would say it's more of an opportunity to reach out to parents than even to the kids. Of course, the kids are going every day and hearing the gospel every day and singing songs and, and learning Bible stories. But on the last day or the, the second Sunday when the Americans are there, usually the parishes invite the parents to come to the service so that they can hear the kids sing some songs and tell about what they've learned during the week. And that's a really huge opportunity for the Americans and the Polish staff to meet the parents and to interact with them on a personal level and build relationships with them. And over the years, I've really seen a lot of Americans who have come to the same camp several times become friends with some of the parents of the kids that they're teaching. And, and it's been a really great opportunity for them to share their faith. Wow. Well, let's, 
Let's head to, let's go to Latin America and the opportunity to serve this summer. Aaron, tell us about how individuals or teams would have the opportunity to serve in Latin America this summer. Sure. So every August, the first full week of August, our entire region gets together in a conference. We go to Punta Cana, Dominican Republic. The goals of the conference for all of our missionaries are fellowship, rest, and study. So it's a time when, when we get to take a break from the, the daily grind of our normal duties and come together. It's a time to fellowship with colleagues that we don't get to see very often. For many of our missionaries, it's the only time of the year or one of the only times of the year that they get to worship in English because we do a divine service and we start each day with with matins and end with vespers and they don't always get to do that in their heart language. So so that's really special for them. And then for our missionary kids, for a lot of them, it's the only time in the year that they get to see some of their other missionary friends who just who get their life, who understand them, who know what it's like. So it's like summer camp for them. They get to hang out and have a good time and see see friends that they only see once a year. And so we the way that volunteers can be involved in this is we really need a group of people who can take care of our of our missionary kids, who can provide child care and not just glorified babysitting, but lead a VBS for them so that they're also being fed with God's word while their parents are in business sessions and Bible studies and keynote speakers. So having that team of people to to kind of keep the kids entertained, but also engaged in the word is really critical so that the parents can can fulfill all three of the goals of the conference for them without distraction. That sounds like a great opportunity for individuals or for a whole team to come. Yeah, serve. it's we'll another one where you can sign up as as an individual if you're interested in in an opportunity, but maybe your your congregation you couldn't get a whole group together from your congregation. You can sign up as an individual, and like Chelsea was saying, it's we've had everyone from college students to retirees. So you do have to be 18, but it it would be applicable and appealing, I think, to a really wide variety of ages. Excellent. We're learning about opportunities to serve this summer in Poland, Malawi, and the Dominican Republic. We have more to share in just a moment. We'll continue the conversation right here on The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. At Concordia University, Wisconsin, we believe you were created for a reason, to use your God-given gifts to help others, to live a life of self-sacrifice in a me-first world, to live a life that's uncommon. Whether you're taking one of 50-plus online programs or learning with us in person on the shores of Lake Michigan, you'll be equipped to make an uncommon impact. Learn more at cuw.edu. Concordia University, Wisconsin. Live uncommon. Welcome back to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Today we're learning about opportunities to serve this summer in in Poland, in Malawi, and in the Dominican Republic. And these are just some amazing opportunities. So we've learned about opportunities to serve in Poland and in the Dominican Republic. Let's learn more from Shara about opportunities to serve in Malawi this summer. All right. Well, this summer, the church in Malawi will gather their youth from their 24 congregations across the country of Malawi for a youth conference. I believe this is probably the, the second or third time they've had this. But this year, they will also have joining them youth from the church in Zambia, which is their neighboring country. And they usually come together. It's about, I think, a week's long activity event where the youth will have different programs, maybe some service opportunities within communities surrounding the area, but an opportunity for the youth to gather together, to to learn together, to to sing. They're very dynamic singers. I really actually love the music in, in the blood. Anybody that's interested, they'll be able to partner with the youth from the, the church in Malawi to help lead the conference, maybe lead Bible studies or devotions, some breakout sessions, things like that. Some of the activities that are happening during the week, singing, of course, and then maybe just some games. And for youth in Africa, it's a, a wider range than just youth in the United States. So from about 
maybe 16 or 18 till maybe eight, late 20s would kind of be the youth category for people that are interested. I would say young adults and, and, and even just any adults from the United States or college age students and in, in that range, I would say would be a, a good fit for this opportunity. These all sound like really exciting ways to serve this summer. Really exciting stories, I'm sure, that will come out of all of these opportunities as well. Let's talk about the the skills, anything that, that people really need to know or skills or talents that people need to have in order to serve in these opportunities. Chelsea, for the English Bible Camp in Poland, is there anything that people need to know or be able to do for this English Bible Camp? I think for this one, you really don't have to have a specific skill set. Of course, you will be teaching and you'll be expected to teach. So it's great to have some some teaching experience or if you've taught Sunday school or vacation Bible school in the past, that would be a really great characteristic to, to come with. But really, anybody can come. And if you have a passion and a love for sharing the gospel with kids and, and adults and you like to to be in a camp setting, this opportunity is for you. And the curriculum they'll be using, Jesus Frees Us, is one that we custom wrote for this event. So it it really gives you kind of step by step. Here's what you need to do. Here's what you need to know. Perfect. Great. Great. Let's talk about the Missionary Kid program and uh, the opportunity to serve there. Any specific skills, Erin, that are needed to come serve on this Missionary Kid program team? Similar to what Chelsea said, firstly, it's working with kids. So whether it's siblings, grandkids, Sunday school, helping with ZBS at your church, working at a summer camp, any any experience that you have working with kids of all ages. We have kids that range from infants and, and babies all the way to teenagers. So working with kids, experience with kids of any age. We also really need Spanish speakers or Portuguese. There might be some out there, but for sure, I think we can find some Spanish speakers. About a third of our field does not have English as their first language. And that includes missionaries and then, of course, their families. And so we would love to be able to provide our our Spanish-speaking kids, although they might understand some English from school and from their friends. Uh, we would really love to be able to provide them with people that can, can love on them and care for them and teach them God's word in the language of their hearts. So if you're listening and you speak Spanish or know someone who speaks Spanish, we would have a, a special place for you. How about serving in Malawi this summer? Any specific skills or prerequisites necessary <laughs> for serving in Malawi, Shara? I would say, uh, again, to echo Chelsea and Aaron, something similar. I mean, just a, a heart for meeting people, a love for the Lord and being able to share that with, with other people. Again, openness and flexibility to learning about our culture. And again, maybe people that have led, again, VBS or, or use use events in the States will be helpful. We we'll probably have translators, so English is, is quite okay. I don't speak the local language. <laughs> I often have it. And, and um, I am the, the pastors and, and, and some of the youth also speak English as well. So I think a hard to serve our, to, to share the, the love of the Lord with folks, maybe even someone who has led maybe Bible studies or even devotion type activities would be helpful. And how can people apply for these? I'm not sure that we've mentioned dates for any of these either. No. So can so, you give us some of the the dates, the the things we need to know to apply for these? Yeah. So these are all actually kind of happening around the same time. So Malawi is like late July, early August. English Bible Camp in Poland is August 2nd through the 14th. And then the, the one in the DR is, I believe, August 7th through the 14th. 14th also. Yeah. 12th. 12th. Okay. And so they are at similar times. So to start the application process, you would go to servenow.lcms.org and fill out the form there to let us know of your interest. And then if you, depending on whether you're applying for a whole team or for an individual, there'll be a slightly different process, but we'll, we'll check in with your pastor, maybe collect some references. There will be a background check and for individuals, a short phone interview. And then 
assuming you're a good fit, we would ask you to put down a deposit and that would make your placement official. And at that point, I would start working with you to walk you through the preparations necessary. We don't just say, have fun. <laughs> we, we do actually have a fairly structured process to help people prepare and make sure they know what they need to be leading and things like that. For Poland, you do need to start that process by February 22nd. That is our deadline for applications. The other two There's a little more flexibility, but honestly, if you're going to serve this summer, I would get your stuff moving sooner rather than later. Yeah. Yeah. Things like, you know, if you don't have a updated passport, things like that, you want to get those things moving now. now. Right. (laughs) And if you need to do some fundraising, having time for that's useful. And just there are a lot of things to prepare for. And we ask you to do some pretty, pretty serious reading and learn about different cultural aspects. And so, um, you can do it quickly, but it's probably better if you have a little more time. So if you're interested in serving this summer, the first step is go to servenow.lcms.org, find the information there and the application, start that process. But then if it, it all works out for you to get to be on that team, then there's actual training and preparation beforehand. As you said, we're not Correct. just like putting, you know, telling you to get your flight, get there, and then you're on your own. But there's some preparation, some training, reading, learning about the culture, and, and and being somewhat connected to the culture a little bit before getting there. Correct. And and even on the other end, there will be someone there to meet you, probably one of these ladies to to meet you and and help walk you through the experience once you get there too. Excellent. Any tips from our friends in the field about preparation as well? We'll, we'll go back. We'll kind of go in reverse order here. Shara, any tips for preparation if someone is serving, looking to serve with you this summer? I would just say just be flexible and just come with a, a heart to learn. And the African culture is, is just so dynamic and so diverse. And, you know, it's, it's good to be an observer and to be a listener. Sometimes, uh, that, that's just really helpful, so again, to observe and then ask questions later. I still do that quite often. Even though I've been on so for 15 years, when I when I go to a new country, I am quite the observer. So I, you know, just kind of taking a lot of things that way too. But again, being flexible and just being open to learning about new culture. Very good. Erin, any tips for preparing to serve in the Dominican Republic this summer? Ditto to everything that Shara said. And I would say a great way that you could prepare yourself also is to pray. Pray for wisdom and guidance throughout the application process, throughout your time on the ground, for your travel, for your team, and also for, in the case of this opportunity, for all of the missionary kids and missionary families that you are going to be serving. Chelsea, any tips for preparing to serve in Poland this summer? I would echo all of what's been then already, of course, be flexible. Of course, I would say also pray for the students that you will be teaching and, and even their families and their parents and those who, who have not yet heard the gospel and might this summer. But also be be prepared to have conversations and in the most unexpected times and and circumstances. There are a lot of translators and and interpreters that are coming to help at these English Bible camps, and they might not know who Jesus is either. And mm-hmm. and they're excited to meet Americans and ask questions about where you live and what you do. And it's a great opportunity to share your faith. Outstanding. Our guest today serving in all parts of the world, <laughs> Chelsea Irwin serving the Lord in Eurasia. Chelsea, thanks for being our guest. Thanks for having me. Aaron McKenzie serving the Lord in Latin America and the Caribbean. Thanks for being our guest. You're welcome. And Shara Osiro, serving the Lord in Africa. Thanks for being our guest. Thank you. And Anne Gonzalez, serving the Lord right here in the <laughs> States and all around the world in the LCMS Office of International Mission. Thanks so much for bringing this, the, this great opportunities to us today and sharing all the, the ways to find out more. As always, my pleasure. You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support The Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere. Anywhere.